Gus is co-CEO of Aventus Capital Alternate Strategies. Uh, Vaibhav, hi, good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, uh, how are you approaching this market? There's clearly some global risk off, but our market just does not care. You bet, actually, Anuj. I think uh, the momentum on the local side of the domestic market has been phenomenal. And uh, having said that, in spite of the weakness of what we are seeing from a U.S. perspective, uh, we have been trading in the band of about 17,500 to 20,000 kind of, or 18,000 kind of Nifty. So uh, what we would think uh, in this kind of scenario is basically, and given our past experience of how and when the Fed does any action or kind of uh, is on the path uh, of uh, guiding the market towards, uh, it, it's very difficult to fight the policy stance of Fed, Fed uh, on an overall basis. Uh, so what we would think is basically once kind of uh, the uh, euphoria kind of uh, is, is over, uh, things may get a little choppy, uh, you know, on the downside, uh, should the global market continue to correct. So that at this point in time, uh, obviously, I mean, we are cautious and uh, risk factors are pretty much in play at this point in time. Okay. Hi, uh, Vaibhav. Uh, you have a question we normally ask you. How are you shifting around things between your uh, long short positioning? Now, of course, I think, you know, uh, Nigel, in terms of the volatility which is persisting, uh, you know, in those kind of scenarios, one, that we don't go aggressive in terms of positioning ourselves in either direction. We wait for the direction to kind of CP and then probably take a good, uh, you know, directional call. At this point in time, while my gross exposures are lower, my net exposures are also lower than my longer-term averages as well. So at this point in time, it's just wait and watch. Uh, either uh, you know it crosses 18,000 on the higher side and we see that the momentum kind of further catches up, or probably uh, you know witness some amount of correction coming from the global side. So uh, let's let's wait. I would say, but my my intuition or my uh, you know experience tells me that uh, Fed is generally right and uh, we cannot fight Fed is what I would suggest. So uh, Weber, what kind of uh, uh, stocks are you buying now? What broad themes are you backing? So the broader theme is currently you know domestic versus uh, versus global. Uh, so anything which is uh, you know, globally exposed uh, are the sectors which we are kind of avoiding uh, in the light that when the global GDP forecasts are going to get thrown uh, and, and the, all the central bankers are going to focus on demand, uh, you know, suppression. In that kind of scenario, we don't want to be focused or we won't, don't want to be exposed to any sectors which are globally exposed or probably has a larger uh, share of exports as a revenue. So, uh, from a domestic side, I think uh, we'll continue to have our overhead positions, uh, especially on the banking side and probably consumers as well. Industrials, we like it, but at this point in time, they have run up too fast and probably will wait for some correction to kind of uh, see if we can enter again in that kind of space. So, those are the sectors which we are looking for from a portfolio perspective. All right. From the banking names, uh, Webov, give us some more clarity out there. Would you look at the frontline banking names? Uh, NBFCs, I think, is something that in the past you haven't liked. Uh, you continue to avoid them? We continue to avoid them and uh, in, uh, you know, in the past as well. And we have been always bullish on the private banks. We continue with that view. Uh, and, and the only caveat here is basically that should the FI selling kind of resume again, then probably we may see some amount of pressure on banking probably because banking financial is a larger part of the portfolio. But from a fundamental perspective, I think all the banks have cleaned up the balance sheets, uh, you know, are, are witnessing some good amount of credit growth. So the health of the sector is pretty good. Uh, you know, in that light, I think we want to be, uh, you know, going with, uh, you know, pretty much on the private sec sector banks for the longer term investment. But on a trade perspective, we may also look at BSU Bank, but that is probably renting rather than owning. Okay, uh, Weber, the space which has seen a massive rally is automobile, right? Uh, again, that domestic theme comes into play. Uh, but, uh, you know, from being under-owned, uh, are these stocks now getting into a bit of an over-owned category? Or at least, uh, you know, in the, just in the near term? No, I think, see, uh, uh, I, mean, I think there has been a considerable underperformance uh, 
you know, barring these kind of three to six months of autos uh, for the last four to five years. Now, uh, we have to understand that when uh, the tailwinds of raw materials kind of, are, you know, are, are getting in, plus your pent-up demand is pretty much there, uh, generally it's very difficult for the analyst to kind of uh, give a very big bump up in terms of the margin numbers and subsequent to the profitability. So as and when the subsequent quarter, these companies kind of keep on declaring the numbers, we will see some amount of surprise on, 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 on the earnings front, which may probably get their annual number revised, uh, you know, and, and subsequent the movement of the share prices as well. So my sense is basically we're not, not done yet. Uh, we are still bullish, but our focus would be currently from a PV perspective, again, domestic focus, or probably CVs as well. So those those are pocket of our pocket of uh, kind of preferences. All right, Weber, you know, in this conversation itself, I mentioned quite a few times that you're cautious on global themes and metals and mining. That's something that you haven't liked in the last few conversations as well. You said, uh, no, you're not yet comfortable out there. But on IT, uh, you know, they're facing various headwinds. At what point of time would you turn this cautious stance on IT? What if it corrects 10-15% from here on? Would it then come to a level that you know, you'd know like to give it a second look or do you believe there is far more pain given the kind of re-rating we've seen now that PE of multiple itself needs to contract? Absolutely, Nigel. I think some, from a pre-COVID period to now, all, all the, uh, across the sector, we have seen some sizable PE re-rating on the higher side. Of course, there has been considerable uh, or commensurate uh, buoyancy in terms of the business and the, the revenue trajectory. Uh, and, and there is also some pressure on the margins as well. Uh, what we would think is basically, given that the headwinds are coming about from the global perspective, and we may see in a couple of quarters time, a uh, company to start guiding on, on, on softness on the revenue side as well, is when we may see that that can be one bout of negative uh, surprise in terms of the stock price movement on this sector. When we talk about 15% down from here onwards, then uh, probably uh, these companies in which ways have a longer term good uh, prospect. These are cash generating companies. So at some point in time, uh, I think these would, would start, look, uh, start to look attractive, uh, which is 15% down. Of course, we will have a look at it here. Okay, the entertainment is surging, by the way, now 4.5% higher. Uh, 